Hello guys and welcome. Today I will show you how to create a Streamlit application from scratch using VS Code and some Python. It's a really nice framework for you if you want to uh, create a dashboard for your business units that uh, you need to supply with some information on a, let's say a weekly basis or whatever uh, really time period you have to iterate on. And so uh, what, what, I, uh, what I found on the internet was uh, there are not so many great royal resources out there. So I thought I would share how, how I would approach creating and using Streamlit as your uh, main dashboarding tool. So there are lots of other al alternatives out there. You have, for example, Dash, you have Django, you have Flask, you have, uh, uh, you have uh, Shiny, for example, which is an amazing framework. I've been using it a ton, it's a lot of fun, but it's somewhat complex though. So if you're not really into, uh, uh, into actually learning uh, some about uh, the front end of the things, let's say the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, well, it will be pretty tough for you to get into this. But Streamlit is a really, really simple. You, it, it's, uh, you only really do, uh, uh, you do some markdown, you, uh, you don't have to jab around all too much with uh, uh, complex JavaScripts or anything like that to be able to create a really nice dashboard the the basic tools of streamlit is uh, is really great so uh, so having also used other tools such as uh, power bi and uh, tableau i would say that uh, these point and click tools and the costs involved and all that is uh, not really all too nice either so let's say you want to, you want to have an easy framework you want to get up and started really quickly and you also want uh, it to be pretty cheap. And now you're searching for a way to create this dashboard. You have an analysis already in Python and uh, you want to create a dashboard, share it with the team. You want version control to make sure that uh, you can jump back to a previous version in case it crashes or something like that. And you also want to deploy it. Uh, you want to deploy it to a service such as AWS, which I, I will do uh, further on in a later video so today we're going to uh, create the, the dashboard so let's jump into it all right so getting started with using uh, uh, streamlit so the first thing you want to do is basically just uh, spin up your environment here you can uh, go into visual studio and uh, then we're going to move into a uh, new folder uh, we will go to desktop here and let's create a new folder and let's just call it streamlit open that folder and uh, uh, then we will uh, use a new file create a new python file and uh, so here in uh, python it's uh, discovering the interpreters but uh, so what we will do now is just uh, move into uh, uh, a uh, virtual environment so uh, let's see I have a environment here and I will create it uh, I will share this code in the uh, description below so uh, you can just uh, uh, just run this it's basically as Python 3 and it's uh, calling for a module with virtual environments and it creates a, creates a new environment here that's called uh, env and uh, then it basically sources it and uh, that's basically activating the virtual environment uh, if you're not uh, familiar with this and for if this for some reason doesn't work uh, make sure that you have python installed uh, if you're running linux uh, you can probably just install it uh, by running a like a sudo command uh, apt uh, get like python 3 or something like that uh, but I'm running a, uh, a Mac, so I don't uh, have those issues. And uh, you also want to run Python 3. Uh, for some reason, the, uh, the basic uh, interpreter is just Python 2. So make sure to run it on uh, Python 3. So um, now we're inside the environment and uh, it looks like everything's working. So I don't think we have anything uh, installed here. No, we haven't. So uh, um, what we'll do now is just install Streamlit. So you just run uh, 
pip install Streamlit and uh, it should be downloading it basically right away from the internet and uh, then when we have Streamlit then we can uh, actually begin creating things so uh, uh, let's make sure it's downloading here and we can actually start coding something uh, header one uh, so this will basically be our main application here and then when you run it you will run it through the terminal uh, just like uh, yeah, many other Python programs you tend to run them through the terminal so uh, yeah uh, it's a really big package or my internet is really slow <laughs> I'm not sure which one it is but uh, so uh, basically what you can do with Streamlit, you can just write some markdown uh, they also have some uh, really easy API calls so um, you can also, it will start with uh, uh, you importing Streamlit uh, as uh, ST and this is, uh, ST is basically the most common way people call for streamlit and uh, right now it's not lit up as green so it's not installed yet so it will uh, it will not be very happy uh, so but this is uh, probably one of the most powerful commands uh, i've ever seen in a dashboarding to dashboarding tool so S streamlit right there is uh, crazy powerful you can basically put in basically anything here you can put in a table you can put in a a plotly uh, graph or uh, you can uh, you can also insert uh, I don't know let's say a header you can put in markdown files you can it, it, you can basically insert most things into st.write and uh, Streamlit will basically just figure out what it is that you actually <laughs> what you're looking for and if it's uh, if it's not uh, doing what you're expecting uh, if you're let's say you're expecting a bar chart but you want a line chart for some reason uh, then you can uh, then you can uh, basically just change it so you can also uh, you can just change it so you, um, uh, and just call for basically a line chart instead of a bar chart uh, so let's just call it app.py and uh, we save it here in the uh, in the folder that we're working in. Uh, so okay, and uh, let's see if this uh, actually works. Streamlit run app.py. I have actually no idea if this will actually work, but uh, it's so simple this uh, this framework. So. I don't really see a reason why it shouldn't work. <laughs> uh, but it did not light up as green yet, so uh, uh, perhaps we have some troubles. Uh, but it seems to work. So, uh, great. Welcome to Streamlit. If you're a new developer, no, I'm not a new developer. So, it will run on your local host just for now. So, uh, now you can see that your app is actually running here on your local host so this is the app that we have been just, just created just now and you can uh, change some settings here you can rerun it uh, so usually what I do I just put it here on the side uh, and uh, and then you also put VS code here on the other side so and here you can uh, basically develop and iterate really quickly so if you're changing something here, we can, uh, let's say we're creating a new header, we create a header two, uh, instead of a header one, and then we update it. And then we'll, we'll say here, uh, look, it, here it says source file changed. Do you want to rerun? Uh, and do you want to always rerun? And you can check here, always rerun. And every time that the source changes, uh, so let's say you can also say, uh, here is a, uh, paragraph uh, and then it will just change it's a uh, crazy crazy strong and you can iterate really quickly and uh, we can also check out the uh, uh, the streamlit uh, uh, API 
So uh, you have a reference here where you can check out how you can create different things. Oh, cookies, I love it. Give it to me. Uh, let's see. So what do you, we want to do here? We have some subheaders, we have a caption. So let's say we want to create this as a caption. Uh, ST caption. Did I type that right? No, I did not. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's see if this works. Uh, it seems to actually change. So that's, uh, we can actually just rip off their example there. Why write it yourself when you can just uh, rip someone else? So it actually seems to work. So that's, uh, that's amazing. So now you can, uh, yeah, basically go down, go to town and uh, create some, I, I don't know, let's say you want to create a metric here. Uh, you want to, this is uh, the most important KPI ever. And uh, we're, it's at, uh, I don't know, let's say a big number. Uh, and then it's changed with uh, a pretty high number as well. And you can, then you can see here uh, that you have uh, added a uh, new metric. And uh, a really cool thing as well is that uh, you can basically iterate um, really quickly uh, by doing this. And you can also, uh, I think the columns uh, is uh, also really cool. So here you can uh, create columns. Um, so let's just uh, rip off this example. I think this one is really beautiful. So if we go back here, we can see that we have, uh, it's supposed to be actually not, uh, if we if we expand it, we can see that it will, uh, it will be on the, uh, uh, they will be in their own lab, basically uh, columns. So that's that's really cool. But uh, usually what you will uh, notice is that you have lots of user actually who uh, who does who doesn't uh, be they're not on their uh, they're on their phone. So they will actually view your site like this. And this is actually one of the m most important things is that. It is important that your uh, dashboard is uh, mobile compatible. So this is what actually one of the features I like the most about the Streamlit as well, that it, uh, it seems to handle mobile applications really, really great as well. And then when you change to a desktop, you can get a more, uh, uh, more width. And uh, that's amazing. So let's go back to uh, what we did before. Uh, so let's see if we can create something else. Uh, we want to create. Uh, I want to create a line chart. So let's search for this line chart. My data frame. Let's see if they have some example data as well. Yeah, this looks great. So as you can see, I'm basically just uh, going to the site. I'm basically uh, taking some examples here. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just run them and uh, everything seems to work. So here I don't, uh, it seems like I don't have pandas installed here. PD is not found. And uh, let's say, I don't think I have it installed due to this being a new environment. Uh, no, it's not installed. So we need to install it. So if, if you run into this, uh, this is a pretty common thing that you will run into it's not being defined and uh, and what you do then you basically just go back you say pip install uh, install pandas and then it will install pandas and uh, all of a sudden you just run streamlit run app again here and uh, jump back into the action so as you can see now it's uh, trying to trying to run here. Let's see if it works. Perhaps I need uh, NumPy as well, but uh, yeah, NumPy, fuck. 
Okay, so I need uh, <laughs> I need NumPy as well. That's uh, yeah, yeah, because it's using it here. That's uh, I should have noticed that that was really bad. Um, okay, so we need to exit it as well. So you exit by using Control uh, C, and no, oh damn it, uh, and then. Uh, then you exit the app, you uh, install it. NumPy already installed. Okay. So it should work then, I guess. Yeah. All right. Nice. So it's working. That's amazing. Um, sweet. So as you can see, it's really easy to iterate, uh, to create your own app. Um, yeah, so uh, the next step will be that, so let's say I want to share these insights with my with my team and uh, um, how can I do that? How can I also make sure that uh, this uh, these applications uh, basically stay stay in a stable state? They, if uh, some package get uh, updated, how can I avoid uh, making sure the app doesn't crash? Uh, and we will do that by versioning, controlling it by using GitHub. So uh, let's do that in the next video.